Honorable Member for Viewfort South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, although I missed uh, part of the, the earlier part of the debate on this motion before the House this morning, or and this afternoon rather, I understand that my colleagues have rehearsed the history and have given some indication of how this loan um, came about. And from what I've gathered, no one on this side of the house has spoken against this loan in any significant or material way. There is, of course, understandably disagreement as to how the loan should be utilized and for what purposes and for what. But um, that apart, there is no major um, disagreement in principle or otherwise to the procurement by the government of St. Lucia for this loan because the negotiations commenced with the former government and in fact it emerged out of some, some degree of agreement with the former government. That being said, uh, Mr. Speaker, there will always be issues of disappointment. And for me, I think um, one disappointment has to do with the fact that in this early stage of the loan and given the closure of the B program, the eminent um, closure of that program, it has run its course, that the opportunity was not taken to invest very early in the Donata School to build a new school for the students of Donata. I think that is a very, very, very real disappointment because I think we really need in, to come to terms in our parliament and in the country as a whole with the way we handle and treat disabled children in our community and the issues regarding disabled or challenged children as a whole. And when I go back um, into the administration of education in St. Lucia, I think it is it's fair to say that policymakers have had emotional and sometimes intellectual difficulty in terms of deciding what to do with our challenged students and what degree of investment we should put in them. And I'm not at this stage blaming any administration, although I have a profound disappointment that the allocation to disabled families was reduced so significantly as occurred. I think that's a travesty because really that um, grant should have been doubled, but that's another issue. There, there are so many issues regarding how we handle such children and I repeat that there's been a lot of restlessness. I don't think we ourselves have been as sure as we should be about what are the policy positions to take and how to approach the problems that exist with disabled or challenged students. The former minister, Dr. Robert Lewis, did a correct thing on the initiative of the Caribbean Development Bank at the time, and as you heard from my colleagues to visit Barbados to look at the Barbadian school plant because they have invested heavily in um, education for challenged students, disabled students, over time. And coming out of this is the report that reference was made to this, this, this morning. And there, there are really so many issues regarding disabled children that um, I think it would take far more than a loan of this magnitude to resolve those particular kinds of, of issues. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, the, the fact of the matter is that there are so many practices occurring in our education system that are wrong. I mean, quite often than not, we do not regard teachers of disabled children as professionals in their own right, possessing certain kinds of, of skills. Instead, sometimes we believe that even within the school system, you give teachers deliberately 
to teach children who are challenged who have difficulties for the very simple reason that they figure that the, the administration of these schools figure that um, it will make less demands on the, various, on the various teachers, it wouldn't be difficult, etc. Of course, that's patently false because there are, there are very rare challenges that occur from, from time to time. But despite all the training over the years, we do not have a ready pool of talent that is available. There has been some training in the past, but simply not enough. But as a new phenomena developing within the school system, and that is a phenomenon that I want to spend a few moments on addressing. That is to say that the school system is now being challenged by students who, or by children who do not necessarily fall on the side of the challenged or disabled, but who have major behavioral problems. And the school system is at a quandary as to what to do with these children. And while for me, I am limited by what I can say on this matter, because I, I represent parents, one particular parent in one case, so I have to be cautious and careful. But it points to a deeper problem that, for example, if these students emerge as having behavioral problems, you get referrals being made to the wellness center, that these students are being asked to go to the wellness center for evaluation. I, I just want to say to you, Mr. Speaker, can you imagine the trauma of sending a nine-year-old, 11-year-old, 12-year-old to the wellness center to be evaluated by one of the psychiatrists at the wellness center. And these things are occurring in the school system at the moment. And these are students with behavioral problems that really the school system does not know how to handle or what to do with these students because the teachers within the school are totally at a seat totally at a loss as to how they should tackle these problems. Now, you'll be amazed, Mr. Speaker, the kinds of, of issues, and I just, I'm not going to digress, but to emphasize the peculiarity of the problem. Only yesterday, I had a discussion with some, some parents who were pointing out, and or some individuals rather, and I, I wouldn't of course name them, parents and um, daughter children. And they were making the point, for example, that there have been incidents in the school system where children have been major challenges to their teachers and to their principals. They're exhibiting very antisocial behavior. And uh, when, in one instance, the confidence of a particular child was, was um, secured, the child in confidence told the individual concerned, well, one of, the, um, one of the things that happens is that on mornings, I'm often given marijuana tea for the day. Now, I want to make it very clear that I'm one of those who believe that the point we have reached a point where we have to decriminalize. There's no question about that. Um, the momentum has the momentum is unstoppable, and uh, whether we like it or not, we will have to move in, the in that direction. Especially what is happening in the rest of the Caribbean, and of course, even in our main source markets in Canada and in the United States. Now, whether it's uh, an issue that the entire society has to discuss, but the reality of that situation is that you already have Antigua moving in a certain direction, Jamaica has gone in a, a certain direction, and others are rapidly following. Now, I say this, Mr. Speaker, to point out that if the day comes when there is decriminalization, the country will face major public health issues. And the challenge will be, in the short term, 
to handle the public health issues that arises. So for example, the kind of problem that you would have with a child being sent to school with some marijuana tea in the morning is a public health issue. And of course, it would seem to me that the parent who was involved in this matter really should have engaged not just counselors but others to point out the very real danger that is occurring. But here is a parent attempting to deal with some behavioral problems of a child, but she's creating more behavioral problems as a direct result. And what is happening is that the school system does not have the capacity to address problems like that affecting our children. Now, they are not, and I repeat, they are not children who are disabled. They are not children who are um, challenged, but they are children who have been socialized into a certain social environment. They have been children who are encountering particular difficulties at home, and they are children who are therefore manifesting this antisocial behavior in the classroom, in the school environment, but the school does not know how to deal with it. Well, alcohol as well, I mean, is an issue. And at least alcohol is being dealt with, as I said, as a public health, public health issue in much the same way that the day marijuana is ever decriminalized, then it, becomes a, it will become a public health issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I say this um, to make two points. First, when this project was originally conceived, the principal emphasis really was on dealing with um, children who are challenged for one reason or another, who are disabled for one reason or other, and of course, um, the early stages of, of um, preschool education. It seems that there has been some shift in focus. And my regret is that even if we have had some shift in focus, that the opportunity was not taken to construct a new school for the children who are disabled because of the, um, the unusual difficulties we have had with Donata. Mr. Speaker, I am aware that an area of land has been made available to the association in question next to the Impulet Louise primary school, but I suspect that there has been little progress in moving towards the construction of a replacement school. And I, I really hope that this is a matter that we can take on board and can be taken on board very, very early and very, very quickly. The second reason, Mr. Speaker, why I'm making this intervention is, to, is this issue of the, the children with behavioral challenges. And the report out of Barbados, <clears throat> prepared by the former minister and his staff, did make the observation, which I think is eminently sensible, that in Barbados, the government has developed particularly particular centers um, throughout the island in key, um, in key positions and they staff those centers with counselors. They staff them with um, doctors and social workers, of course, as well as, as teachers. But what happens is that once the child has been identified as a child with a behavioral problem or behavioral disorder, the child is then sent to those centers for guidance and for instruction and hopefully reintegration in the school system. I think this is really a very sensible approach. And while I hear the, just in time to hear the um, member for Miku North um, enunciate and elucidate on some of the um, interventions that will occur, which of course includes policy formulation, et, et, et cetera. 
I hope that this is one suggestion that can be actively pursued, especially in the urban center in the north, because it cannot ever, ever be right for children with behavioral problems to be sent to the mental wellness center for evaluation. Likewise, Mr. Speaker, you ask, do we have any clinical psychologists who look after children? Do we have any child psychologists? And the answer is that they are exceedingly difficult and rare and cannot be easily found. So most parents then, what they do is to try and get hold of counselors for some guidance and for some advice with the result that that can only be a partial solution, if only for the very simple reason that behavioral problems of children are so very complex and so very difficult that a special kind of expertise is needed to deal with it. Now, whether the approach by the government has amputated the options here um, is, of course, a point for reflection, because my understanding was and is that the former government had, in fact, um, asked the CDB for a more substantial sum of money for this program. But the current government, in its wisdom, decided to reduce the amount that was requested. And uh, while reducing the amount that is requested, identified other priorities within, of course, the existing loan program. I just hope that along the way, we can rethink this somewhat and even if you're going to eventually get a consultant to give you some policy options and policy priorities, that we begin to move on to some of these existing problems that we have. Because it is these experiences that are making the lives of teachers and principals and even parents unbearable. Because there are parents out there who simply do not know what to do. And they believe that once they encounter these problems, then the solution is simply um, either, as I said, go to the wellness center, get a, somebody to evaluate, or refer the children to the police, who are perhaps even more ill-equipped to handle the difficulties that we have. But I am deeply concerned, Mr. Speaker, about the rising incidence of antisocial behavior within the school system and, of course, the um, inability of the system to deal with those issues. And I hope that um, rather than the delay that is inevitably going to occur out of any policy analysis that will emerge and so prolong in the problem, that there are some immediate interventions that can be taken to deal with the problem. I am aware, Mr. Speaker, that under the original proposal, a sum of money was supposed to have been made available to repair the Center for Disabled Children in V4. Of course, I am not going to comment um, on how it is that V4 seems to suffer so much at this day's sitting. I leave that for another day. But that being said, I hope the Minister of Education might have taken the opportunity to perhaps even give some comfort to the parents of the Beanfield Secondary School, because I know my colleague to my left has spoken on the challenges facing the parents of the Beanfield Secondary School who have been told that despite the fact that choices that the parents made choices for the Beanfield Secondary School, they must now um, withdraw these choices and make new choices to other schools in the area that they would be assigned to. The parents have, of course, flatly refused to do so. And they have indicated that they will not pursue that approach. May I suggest, Mr. Speaker, that this situation should not be allowed to get out of control. And what the parents really want is a meeting with the minister to discuss the issue and resolve the issue because there are solutions to that problem. 
that does not necessarily involve the transfer of the children to other schools in the South, thereby increasing the cost of education for those parents. And the parents, of course, are adamant too because the Beanfield Secondary School has also emerged now as a school of tremendous credibility, I would say, after just a few years, that the percentage cutoff for entry into the school is in fact in the 60s, just below the Vieux Senior Comprehensive Secondary School. So I would hope that the minister will ask for a meeting with the parents, as the parents have been asking to resolve this issue. They are quite right that the policy implications of the ministries or the department's decision cannot be settled with junior officials of the Ministry of Education. And if I can offer the minister any comfort, I will not be at the meeting. You may come down, I will not be at your meeting. So, um, but I hope you can find it within yourself to make sure that you come down to the school, meet the parents and have a frank and open discussion to resolve this matter. Because if that does not happen, I think that would create unnecessary conflict and tension within the school that can easily be avoided and resolved. That having been said, Mr. Speaker, um, despite the fact that we now have a truncated program, I certainly welcome the investment in this sector. I'm sorry that the, the full value of the allocation to the students of the disabled community the challenged students are not reflected in the existing plans. And I think that's really a very sad, but I hope that other initiatives can at least proceed in the planning process rather than wait for any policy output from consultants appointed by the Caribbean Development Bank. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.